What's going on guys? Greg Bear here of Greg's Halfling Garden Channel and in today's video I just want to go over the seeds I'm going to use this year to grow produce to sell and also grow plants to sell. With that being said, roll the intro. But first, how about a lonely little shih tzu on a couch? Here we go! I got a big pile to go through, so let's get started. First off, I've got Italian basil. I found this on Etsy. This is about the cheapest price I could find for the weight, besides going to Johnny Seeds, but unfortunately Johnny Seeds is only selling to commercial farmers this year, so I got this for $8 for free shipping, and I think it's... I think it's like 5 grams. It's a lot of weight. There's a lot of seeds in here. I could probably easily get at least five whole flats of basil out of this, so definitely worth the price. Next, not something I really enjoy buying, but I got some Seedway sweet corn. Uh, the corn I chose last year was kind of like a dwarf variety, and the kernels were a little too small, so this year I got this one. It says the kernels can get up to nine inches, and the stalks are a little taller too, so I did sell the stalks I grew last year from the corn. Uh, I wasn't able to sell them for what I wanted to sell because they were a little short. So these are pretty much normal size stocks. So I should be able to get like $5 for a bunch of maybe like three or four stocks. So that should go pretty well. And got my yellow sweet Spanish onion. I don't know the order of the videos I'm going to be producing, but I actually already planted these technically. So you might be seeing the other video first or vice versa. Who knows? But first time trying to grow onions from seeds. I've always gotten onion sets and I guess I just never pick out good ones because they never do very well. There's that. Uh, here's a lot of things I'm going to be growing just to sell plants. These are just from uh, my local dollar store. We've got a company called the Page Seed Company. They're like 20 miles away and they produce a lot of seeds for our local CVS, Agway, dollar stores and things like that. So cheap seeds, I think they're like six for a dollar. You don't get much in the packs, but just fun to buy. So we got a Jack Lantern pumpkin. I'm sure everybody will eat that up. Uh, table squash, acorn. Uh, got Cosmos flowers, just to start those. Uh, another table squash. I think that's all of those. I'm gonna be growing more produce than that, of course, to sell, but those are just some from the dollar store. Okay, next, really excited about this one. This is the walking stick kale from Baker Creek. It's, it kind of reminds me of like a dinosaur lacinto kale, but it gets like 12 feet tall and then you use the stock, you can use it for a fence post or a walking stick like the name suggests. Super excited for this. Didn't come with many seeds, I think it's only like maybe 15 seeds at best in this packet, but I didn't really want to grow that many anyways, it's going to take up a lot of space and shade out my other plants, but just something fun to grow. Next we got the birdhouse gourd. Now. I go to a lot of places, like uh, farmer's markets and things like that, and people sell those birdhouse gourds painted with stupid pumpkin faces on them for like 10 to $15, so I thought I could just do this. And I don't necessarily have to finish these this year because they dry, so it could be a winter project next year where I paint those up and sell them in the spring or save them for a fall and make funny pumpkin designs on them. Just something I'm going to try this year. Next, Benny Komodo Watermelon. Um, I live in Binghamton, New York, which is, well, technically upstate New York, I guess you could say. It's zone 5B to 6-ish now. Uh, I have a very short growing season compared to like where you grow watermelons in probably North Carolina and have very good success. I've never had really good success with watermelons. They usually get about half the size they need to because my season's so short, even though I start stuff in the greenhouse. So this variety particularly, it's small, so it's not gonna take as long to produce. And it's also designed for northern climates. So it's a win-win. Very excited for this. I love watermelon, especially when you pick it and it's still warm from the sun. There's nothing like that. Next, another one I'm really excited for, the Minnesota Midget Melon. Pretty much the same exact thing as the Benny Komodo melon, another small melon designed for colder climates with short growing seasons. And it's a cantaloupe in this place, but should be another fun one to grow. Next, ah, Baker Creek always sends the free pack, so we got Buttercrunch lettuce this year. 
uh, probably won't grow it to eat everything. I'll just grow it in a big pot. Everybody loves those salad bowl pots with a bunch of lettuce in it, so I can sell those for like three bucks a piece. Should be super easy. Next, uh, no picture on this one. This is the Tahitian melon. It's actually a crookneck squash. I don't know why they call it a Tahitian melon, but whatever. Um, nothing too crazy about this. It's just your average crookneck squash. You get up to 10 pounds maybe. Um, probably about two feet. The picture has the guy on a couch covered in the squashes. It's funny to look at, but yeah. Everybody loved the crookneck squashes I grew last year. I made probably 30, 40 bucks just off of those, selling like 10 squash. And I only took up maybe 10 square feet, so super profitable. This one right here, this was a huge hit last year. The Jack B Little Squash. They get up to maybe five or six inches of diameter. And my one vine produced over 20 little squash on it so I'm definitely gonna up this to probably at least hopefully five to ten vines especially if I expand my garden one more time which I'm really considering even though I don't want to take up more yard space but we'll see definitely a super profitable one it makes the stand look great these pumpkins just look beautiful when they're on display all right another one I'm super excited for after looking through the Baker Creek catalog this is strawberry spinach it's not actually spinach. It's more of like an arugula slash dandelion green kind of flavor. And it produces these berries on here, which they say have a slight hint of watermelon and strawberry flavor to them. Super excited for this. Should be very interesting. Not something I'm gonna sell at the stand, just something for me to try, because I love berries. Okay. Uh, I don't think Market More Cucumbers need any exclamation. They're one of the most popular along the straight eight cucumbers for cucumber growth in North America. Probably one of the ones you'd find at the grocery store. Just a standard cucumber, get like eight inches long, straight, and nice seed pack inside and super crispy, crunchy when you eat them. Yeah, I always grow cucumbers. I always usually use straight eight or Market More. They're always successful. All right. Another one I'm super excited for, this is the King of the North Pepper. Like I said, I live in a colder climate with a short growing season. Uh, last year I grew, uh, I think just a standard bell pepper, I couldn't tell you the name anymore, but did fairly well. Um, I started producing probably in late July, maybe even mid-August, so my season of production was only like a month, honestly, after all that plant growth. So I found this pepper, it's designed to grow in the north and it's a smaller bell pepper so i should see a little bit more production now hopefully really excited for that one here's another one the rewa pepper i honestly don't know why i picked this it just looked really cool and the description was nice it said it was a super prolific producer and also sweet and it fit into my category of uh kind of like a lunchbox size pepper something maybe three or four inches long, but not as big as a bell pepper. Here is another super exciting one for me. If you looked at the Baker Creek catalog this year, they have habanero peppers that aren't spicy. So you get that awesome mango flavor from the habanero peppers without that 300,000 Scoville unit heat. Because I actually don't like hot peppers at all, honestly. But I love the flavor of habaneros. I'll definitely smell them, but I don't eat them or anything. I just love that mango-y flavor they have. Okay, and this is going to be one of my main peppers this year, the Cubanella. Um, everybody knows Cubanellas. They sell them at every grocery store in America pretty much. It kind of looks like a banana pepper, just a little bigger. Uh, I grew banana peppers two years ago. They did very well. They just weren't big enough. So this is like the next step for that. Um, they're not as wide as a bell pepper, a little longer. I sh who knows I might get five peppers per plant so it's gonna be a fun one along with the king of the north I'm really having fun growing peppers these last few years okay a couple more we have the Ford hook zucchini this is just your super standard zucchini that every gardener for the last 50 years has probably grown the dark green ones with the white speckling on it straight uh, if you let them go they'll get three feet long probably if you let it nothing more to explain to that really and another one, the yellow squash, the early prolific squash. I think this has like a 55 day turnaround time on it. And 
nothing crazy, just another standard yellow squash anybody would grow. But since it's from Baker Creek, it's heirloom and super safe, non-GMO, all that stuff. Uh, I've got a few more seeds. I honestly don't know where they went. Uh, like I said, Johnny Seeds isn't growing or isn't selling anything to anybody but commercial agriculture because of COVID. So I wasn't able to find the Juliets from them this year. So I went on Etsy and found Juliet tomato seeds. I think I got like a hundred pack for $12, which is almost the same price I paid at Johnny's. If you don't know about the Juliet tomatoes, they are an F1 hybrid, which means if you try to save the seeds from this year to next year, it won't produce the same plant and it'll completely fail. But that doesn't matter to me because it has a very good quality, which is it's pretty much resistant to early and late blight, which in my area is a killer because we have very moist, humid summers and they're always super hot. So blight is very prolific in my area, especially on my tomato plants. I can spend five hours a week just trimming off blight at the bottom of my plants and it still just keeps coming. And I also try to eradicate blight all the time with different commercial chemicals with no luck. I've also tried water down bleach, the baking soda trick, all that kind of stuff with no avail. But last year I grew the Juliet tomatoes and they did happen to have blight on them but the blight did not kill the plant and the plant kept on going and getting stronger and growing taller. So it definitely did very well. And the Juliet tomatoes produce like crazy. They're very similar to the production level of like a sweet million or a sweet 100, just gobs of tomatoes. I made hundreds of dollars off those tomatoes last year. So super excited for that. Also, I have a Tommy Toe tomato, which is more of your standard like uh, cherry size round tomato, whereas the Juliet is like a plum cherry tomato hybrid kind of thing. And the Tommy Toe is also resistant to, it might just be early or late blight. It's one of those, it's not both, but still super excited. And also the Wisconsin 55 tomato. Uh, I grew that last year, did very, very well. And yeah, I ordered those from the Seed Saver Exchange, another great company to go through besides Baker Creek. So super excited to get those in the mail. I know they're they're a little behind. They're a smaller company and they're, re they're really working hard to get the seeds out. So I'm not too worried. I should get them in the next week or so. And I think that about covers everything. I had to go and order seed trays off of Amazon because my local Agway actually had to double their prices because of demand so much. So I was able to find, I think it's a 50 pack of the 1020 no hole seed trays for $75, which breaks down, I think it's like $1.60 a piece, which saved me about 50 cents a tray, which is a huge saving. So super excited for that. I should be getting those tomorrow in the mail and then I can finally start planning pretty much everything. Also bought a four cubic foot bag of perlite from my Agway to go with my uh, four and a half cubic foot bale of Pro Mix, and I got some starter fertilizer in that. So I'm gonna be mixing that up in the wheelbarrow and getting my my four by four by six inch deep square pots for my tomatoes and peppers going really soon. Uh, today is March 8th. I have to pretty much start planning this week or I will get behind, honestly. And once the snow melts, I'll also be going out there and fixing my greenhouse. Super excited about that. Uh, Binghamton, New York received pretty much the most snowfall of any New York uh, city this year, I believe. At one time, we had 44 inches of snow in a like maybe like a one or two day period. It was a lot of snow. The whole city pretty much shut down. It was wild. Uh, but I'm rambling on here. I don't want to keep you too much longer. So if you like this video, definitely consider giving it a like. If you want to stay in the know for future uploads, definitely turn on the notification bell. Make sure it's set to notifications on always. And of course, consider subscribing to the Greg's Halfling family. Become one of my halflings. And I will see you guys next video. Greg Bear out.